Good morning. My name is Tanya from Power Pantaloons, and today we have John. John, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, Tanya, thank, for, thank you for having me uh, on your little call today. I really appreciate it. You're such an amazing person, and I know you do great work. So, yeah, my name is John Schlapak. Um, I, um, I have a 40-year background in holistic health. I started studying holistic health back in 1969 probably before somebody were born. And uh, so I, I uh, studied uh, nutrition and I studied her herbology. I studied uh, uh, different forms of massage, reflexology, Japanese. And then I got into um, a little bit more into working with the physical body. And I became what's known as a registered massage therapist here in BC. And that is a, a, a massage therapist who works uh, in the medical system. So it's a medical okay. massage therapist. So I worked with doctors and specialists for many years uh, as a pain, chronic pain specialist as well. So, and then in the early 80s, I started studying the mind as well, Tanya, and I found it quite fascinating how the mind and the body are sort of connected. And I came to realize something after all those years of working with the physical body that uh, that's only one part of being healthy. You know, the other part has a lot to do with our mind and, and that our mind actually runs the body. So I really, really started to focus on studying the mind. I studied with people like Bob Proctor and Zig Ziglar and many people and started to incorporate uh, that into some of my work. And then in, in 2007, I came across uh, a, a book. Someone had suggested I read a book and this book was from a, an associate of mine from another business I'm involved with. And he, he released this book in 2007. This is the second edition here, Tanya. It's called The Emotion Code. It's developed by Dr. Bradley Nelson. He's a holistic chiropractor from the States, been around for many years. Uh, how to release your trapped emotions for abundant health, love, and happiness. This one, uh, the second one is a little different because it's got a forward by Tony Robbins, who recommends this, as well as recommendations by Greg Braden, Braden and many other people. So uh, he's the developer of the Emotion Code um, and also the, bot, the master program, the Body Code. So... I just started, uh, once I got the book, I started reading the book. And you know how it is with some books, how these kind of grab you? Well, this Absolutely. book kind of grabbed me right away. And it talked about emotions and, and different uh, illnesses and and how they are all connected and how, uh, how our emotions determine a lot in our lives. So I started studying and I went to, right away, went to one of his seminars in the States and uh, we reconnected after a few years, and uh, I uh, and eventually became an assistant in his program and learned a lot about heart walls. That's something that I really love to help people with. And I went on to become an instructor. Uh, I was a emotion code instructor in Canada for many years. So I've been teaching it and speaking it and helping people uh, all over the world uh, with their health issues. And it's great. I do this from the comfort of my home. Oh, that's lovely. This Being able we, to work from home. Yeah, from dis distant uh, healing work or proxy work, it's called. Yeah, like I absolutely agree with you on the mindset. For me, going through the chemotherapy, I feel that mindset was was pivotal. It was the, the first thing. It's the first thing in my three-step uh, formula. One is mindset. Uh, the second is support systems, building a, a support system to help you. You don't want people around you who are mourning you or giving you expiration dates while you're still standing there. That's not helpful. And the third thing is alternative modalities, uh, holistic modalities, that wellness modalities that help you while you're going through what whatever your oncologist has recommended for you. In In mindset, for me, it was every morning actively choosing to live and how I represented that is when I changed my underwear I would put on Wonder Woman's underwear which is the power <laughs> pantaloons that that's the that's the reason we call it that is is because I would literally put on Wonder Woman's pantaloons because 
Wonder Woman can't die, right? So that 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 for me was how I acknowledged that I was choosing to live every day. And I think that that is the basis of wellness. And certainly, you know, it's interesting for many, many years, we, uh, as being part of the medical system, for example, it was interesting as I, becoming from a holistic background and getting into a medical role model or disease model, as it's known, uh, it was interesting how they took, I always thought how they took the mind and they separated it from the body. And then they took the body and they chopped it up into little pieces. Some people look after the, the, the kidneys. Some people look after the shoulders. Some people look after this. But uh, in my early years of practice, I started to realize uh, that how everything was connected. It wasn't just the, they weren't separate at all. They were connected. And your mind uh, is probably the most important tool you have when it comes to dealing with any type of uh, illness. I, so I, I think agree. starting it that way, you know, starting with a positive mindset, uh, it's been shown many, many times that a positive mindset can change your vibration, raise your vibration. And by raising your vibration, it can help you overcome many, many obstacles. Yeah. Uh, after, after walking through my cancer journey, uh, one of my good friends who was with me through my entire journey ended up with a cancer diagnosis and she she did not choose to fight it she accepted it and and uh unfortunately she she has passed on because she i you know you can't you cannot hold people like everybody has their own journey and you you can you can want to help them you you can you can give them all the resources in the world but if they don't choose to accept it you have to learn to live with that is their choice and that's a really hard thing to do that is very hard i mean you know being uh, in the healing arts for many years the people you love the most sometimes your family your friends uh, are some of the people that are not open to, you know, certain things. And it's a hard, it's a hard haul. I mean, my mother went through cancer four times. That's a She's lot 92. And I was able to help her pretty well all the way through that, except for the first time I wasn't really involved in so much in this work, but uh, I, I know I was a major part of her healing was, Having her having the right mindset was number one. Number two, getting the support, like you say, that she needed and following her, uh, the oncologist's uh, rules. You know, this is, again, remember the medical system is, is something that's, it's a part of our, our system. We need it just as much as we need holistic health and alternative. We need both. So my mother went through cancer four times. She's 92 or just turned 93 and she's doing great. So... Um, mindset makes a huge difference. And, I, yeah, absolutely. Like I think it is the number one building block to wellness. I really do. Um, and that that's from my direct experience. Well, yeah. I'll share a quick story with you. Something that I always wondered about, I don't know about you, Tanya, but many years ago, I would see these medical studies. They would study, uh, take a uh, now I'm not against the medical system. To, don't get me wrong. We need to work together, but uh, there's different ways of viewing things. So, for example, they would uh, maybe come up with a new uh, medication for pain relief. And they would do a study that say they had 50 people in that study. They do this study. And at the end of the study, they would say, OK, um, out of the 25 people, we gave the pain pill. And 25 other people got the sugar pill. So basically what we did was we discovered that those people that got the pain pill, out of all those people that got the pain pill, at least 15% uh, of them had an, uh, a reduction in pain up to maybe 10, 20%. And then the part that they don't tell you is the 25 people that got the sugar pill, how many, what percentage of those people actually 
got a reduction of pain. Many of those people. So I always said, well, why aren't you studying that? Exactly. Exactly. The the medical, the way the medical system is built, at least here in the U.S., um, is, as far as I'm concerned, only half the picture. I think we really absolutely need to blend East meets West, you know, holistic and, and allopathic together in order to create a more well, well-rounded system. But I, you know, in my experience, the medical system is to treat the symptoms of the medicine that they give you based on the symptoms that you have. They're not actually trying to find uh, the cure for what you, what you're, what you're going through. And then you have to take the follow-up medicine medicine to fix the side effects of the medicine. And, 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 you, and it's a snowball to hell in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it's true what you say, we do need both. Systems. We need holistic health. We need the medical system. I mean, I was in a major motorcycle accident many years ago and if I was happy we have our medical system here because yeah. I had some great care at the hospital, great surgery. So we, we do need that. But again, when it comes to health, being healthy, it's not just a physical thing. I agree. I, I absolutely agree. And, you know, I feel that I was exceedingly fortunate that when I was going through my chemo journey, my oncologist, all of my medical team, 98% of them were really amazing people. And they, they absolutely, nobody talked to me about expiration dates. If they, if they had that kind of conversation, it happened while I was not in the room and my cancer was very aggressive. Um, it's, it's a rare uterine cancer. And I ended up with a carsosarcoma, which is two cancers. And, uh, most people don't know this, but the average healthy uterus is four ounces when they removed mine, it was over 10 pounds. So wow. that's literally the size of a bowling ball. Mm. And that was just cancer. So if you look at the science, like if you look at pure science, my my survival was not guaranteed at all. And n nobody really talked to me about that. And they let me do what I was doing, which was power panties and and having conversations with people about how we're kicking kicking cancer's ass and uh, educating people while we were going through it and and like after I lost all my hair I I went through a um, a bevy I'll I'll say a bevy of ridiculous uh, costume store wigs and every day I went into radiation I wore a different wig and. It, you know, like just to have a better experience for myself and other people that were in the hospital at the same time as me, I have walked through the hospital and I have this neon pink or this bubblegum blue or, you know, wild yellow hair and I would get stares and, and, and that was entirely the point. Like I wanted people to have a little amusement because I needed it. Mm -hmm. And I really, I had this one wig that was truly, absolutely atrocious. A friend of mine, we, we were at the costume shop and she's like, she's like, I'll buy that wig for you if you wear it the rest of the day. And it was, it, it, it was black with all these curls and it had these like red pom-pom things that stuck out over here, like cones and then like little dreads hanging off it. I, I wore it the rest of the day. And after, you know, going to the grocery store, she's like, please, take it off. And I'm like, no, a deal is a deal. I'm wearing it the rest of the day. <laughs> well, the one thing you had going for you and you still have, as far as I can see, is your attitude. And that attitude is everything, isn't it? It is. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it really is. Like we, we could talk about mindset all day. It is, it's one of my favorite subjects. Um, was it was it Henry Ford that said if you if you think you can or you think you can't you're right? Exactly. I think it was Henry Ford that said that, and I like that is so it's such a powerful statement, and you know it, it, when you talk to people about stuff like that, and they're like, yeah, I'm like, no, really think about it for a minute. 
if you put your mind to it and you work at it, fail faster, just get there faster. You know, failing is part of the learning process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so. there's something I, I came across, Tanya, uh, and from the emotion code, and some people aren't may not be aware of this, but um, how our emotions impact our health and well-being. Oh, talk to um, us about that. I'd love to yeah. learn more. This, I, I came across a, uh, a simple diagram many, many years ago, and I, and I like to share that when I do my talks or work with people. And it's a very simple diagram, it, and I got it from a fellow, you may not know of him, his name is Bob Proctor. He's one of the I've world's leaders. Yeah, I did a lot of study with him. So this is a, a picture he drew of the mind. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, yes, perfect, right it, there. Yeah, so he said, draw a circle, a big circle, cut it in half, and a smaller line with a small circle, and put a C on the top and S under in this in the big circle, and then a P. The, the C stands for your conscious mind. That's your thinking mind. Uh, and your S stands for your subconscious mind. That's actually your emotional mind, your subconscious mind. And your P stands for your physical reality. So in, in essence, uh, from this, uh, if 90 to 95% of the day we are operating our lives from our subconscious mind, our emotional mind, do you think it's going to have an impact on our overall well-being? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. Um, when you think about it, I'll, I'll give you a quick example of the difference between the conscious and the subconscious mind. Uh, so let's say, do you have a favorite uh, store you like to shop at? Like grocery store? Yeah. Or... Yeah. I guess grocery Costco. Store, yeah. Like... yeah. Okay. So you know that you're going to make a decision. You made a decision that morning. You're going to go to Costco and you're going to go and you're going to get some groceries, right? So you get in your car. I assume you have a, you're have you driving there. You get in your car and you to leave the driveway. You turn left and you know if I go down three or four blocks and then I'll turn right and I'll go down another block or so. Now I'm at Costco, right? Now, have you ever done that before where you've gotten in your car and you've driven somewhere and you got there and then all of a sudden you thought, how did I get here? Yes, that has My happened. mind is in a whole other place, right? A whole other place. Well, that was your conscious mind initially making the choices to turn left and turn right. You were consciously making choices along the way to get there. But sometimes you get there and you go, how did I get here in my mind? That's your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind has been over that. You've been over that route so many times that it knows it. It remembers it. And so you can almost go on automatic pilot sometimes. So that's your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is the part that I work with, Tonya, with people. And that's the part of the mind that knows everything about you. That everything. makes sense. From the time you were born, everything you've ever tasted, everything you've ever touched, every experience you've ever had in your life, whether it's you consider it a positive or negative, everything is recorded in your subconscious mind. So when I work with people, what I do is I energetically connect to that subconscious mind and I follow a program, it's called the Body Code Emotion Code. It's a master program. And when we're looking for what's causing something or what's contributing to something. Most of the time we are going to find it on the body code. And there's six different categories here on this. It's probably one of the most sophisticated programs in the world. We spend a lot of time in the energy sector, which is to do with your trap, your emotional aspects. So if you think about this, let's say when you were four years old, let's say you had a, an argument with your dad. And after that argument, you felt angry about it. Well, here you are, you know, 30, 40 years later, and somehow you never really dealt with that anger. Yeah. It's still there. It's still there. And you're in it. it's having an impact on your on your health or your well-being. It's still there energetically. Right. It causes a dis-ease. Yeah, an imbalance. And wherever there's a 
what we call a trapped emotion in your body uh, or an unprocessed emotion, for example, it creates a distortion in your energy field. And the more of them you have, the more your immune system is affected, the more your ability uh, to function in life is, or to be healthy or happy, the more of that is determined. So what I do is I just uh, follow my program. I just go simply right into the source of whatever that is. Uh, let's say it was something at three years old uh, that affected your immune system today. Uh, I go right in and it's kind of like you're deleting viruses from your hard drive. You know, we do that on our, yeah, <laughs> we do that on our computer, but we can also do it with our mind. Get rid of some of that baggage or those thoughts or ideas that are affecting us today. And that leads me to a, a book. I mean, this is a book, one of the books that I've, I use as well, and I've demonstrated, it's called The Divided Mind. I don't know if you've ever seen this one here, The Divided Mind, Dr. John Sarnos. I haven't picked that up yet. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Um, he talks about how the it's called the epidemic of mind-body disorders, how we have separated the mind from the body. So when it comes to any type of disease, for example, we need to be very aware of our mindset, like you said, because it's going to impact our body and, and our health and, and especially our emotional mindset because our emotions, trapped emotions can end up anywhere, Tony. They can end up in an organ, a gland, a chakra, a nerve, a muscle, a tendon, a ligament. They can end up anywhere in our energy field. And by being caught up or trapped there they can cause a distortion they can have definitely trapped emotions can lower our immune system and i did a lot of work with people over the last few years with covid and found that i did a lot of boosting of their immune systems and a lot of times it were it was emotions that were affecting their immune if you're angry or frustrated or in a state of fear your immune system is in that place as well yep yeah and it's going to impact uh, your your well-being and your physical outcome. So Dr. John Sarno, he, he quotes a couple of things in here. If you don't mind, if I read these two sentences here. Oh, please. Yeah, he calls it psychosomatic disorder, so mind-body disorders. He said there's two types of categories for those disorders. Um, number one, there's those disorders that are directly induced by the unconscious emotions, directly mm -hmm. induced by those emotions. Things like pain problems. So I do a lot of work with chronic pain. Sometimes it's one or two emotions and it's gone. Uh, things like reflux, ulcers, irritable bowel, skin disorders, allergies, and many, many others. These are directly induced by unconscious emotions. And then there's a second type are those uh, disorders in which the unconscious emotions may play a role in causation, but are not the only factor. Those are things like autoimmune disorders, for example, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, cardiovascular, and cancer. He mentions cancer. Uh, no one, as far as I know, who is currently studying these disorders includes unconscious emotions as a potential risk factor. To my mind, this borders on the criminal. So basically, if we're going through cancer or any particular type of disease, it's important uh, that we um, release some of those negative emotions that could be impacting our health or well-being and not allowing the body to do what it was designed to do. They will definitely interfere with our body's uh, innate ability to heal themselves. And like I said, I've worked with many people with issues and and i think about my mom you know i was so grateful that i have this work to do that uh, i could release a lot of that emotional baggage that was affecting her and uh, she still went through the medical a lot of the medical treatment but at the same time she was a lot happier she was in a better place her body responded better and it recovered because we got rid of some of those blocks yeah, so I'd like yeah. to add something here, though, Tony, one thing, just so you know that I am not here to treat medical conditions. OK, this is holistic yeah. health. I, I what I do is I help people uh, identify those imbalances that are contributing to their problem, whatever it is, 
and we help to restore balance to the mind and the body. So, and right. that, that goes a long way. Right. We're not giving medical advice. We're like, we're not. I'm talking about my experiences and what, what worked for me. Yeah. I, I advocate that you need to speak with your doctor. And if you have cancer, you should absolutely be following the recommendations of your oncologist. Exactly. Because uh, again, it's, we have to approach it from many different aspects, right? Yes. And, 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 and why wouldn't we use all of the tools in our toolbox? Uh, energetic healing, it, it's, it's energy. That's not going to direct, like your oncologist shouldn't have a problem with that. Your oncologist shouldn't have, I mean, I know that they're going to have a problem with, with some herbs because there's a lot of contraindications. Like you're taking stuff that'll help your immune system and the chemotherapy is designed to destroy things. Um, my oncologist told me not, not to do herbs, but you know, the essential oils, fine. Uh, chromotherapy. He was like, what the hell is that? Like healing, <laughs> healing, you know, healing with colors, uh, sound therapy, a, a lot of stuff that, that shouldn't impact, but, but does, but absolutely does. So there's a whole bunch of wellness modalities that the oncologist is like, whatever, as long as, long as you're not taking it internally, I don't care. I don't care. I do whatever you want to do. And I, I think all of those things are super important. If you want to go do some stretching and some yoga grounding earthing when you take your shoes off and just walk directly on the earth to realign your mag magnetism your 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 body's magnet saying it uh, wrong but, yeah but, well i can i'll share something with you because i am uh, my one of my other aspects is i've been involved with magnetic healing and health for over 27 years so recommending that as well as an addition things that will give your body what it needs so it'll do give it good water give it good energy uh earthing for example or grounding is i use a grounding mat but uh which i have in my home i bring mother nature into my home which i am right now but however the way earthing works basically is that the earth is full of negative ions the surface of the earth and uh negative ions calm things down positive ions stir things up so for example around the full moon the earth is bombarded with positive ions so things get stirred up and some people actually feel that i mean i sometimes can tell i don't know about you i can tell if there's a full moon happening usually a day or two before negative ions calm things down so what happens is when you have a lot of inflammation are going on in your body, for example, or stress, your body has accumulated a lot of positive ions. There's a lot of positive ions in there. So when we actually walk on the earth or put our, our feet on the earth, what we're doing is we're taking those negative ions from the earth and it's helping to reduce the amount of positive ions and restoring some energetic balance to the body. There is actually a spot in the middle of the bottom of our foot that's designed for grounding. So we were actually meant to walk on the earth and ground because it helps to reduce stress and inflammation. So there's many, many parts to that. Um, so we could so get into a lot of that. But, your feet that you need to be yeah, putting on the earth. Yeah, well, any part of your body in a sense. However, we were designed to walk on the earth and there is a point on the bottom of our foot uh, that it's like a grounding point. Do you know, like you have a grounding rod in your house? Yep. You have the same thing on your body. Your body has a ground. It's right in the bottom of your foot. However, if any of your skin touches the earth, uh, there there is some grounding effect there as well. So yeah, we were actually designed to live in the nature, and yeah. And I think that's having an impact on us because we are we are away from it, and it could impact uh, someone's ability to deal with a disease or, or to, uh, because we are energetically out of balance, like you said, Tony. Energetically, yeah. out I, I of think it absolutely makes a whole difference. Yeah. So thank you, thank you for telling us about that. So tell me about the the weekly Zoom that you do. 
Um, every Saturday mornings, I do uh, a, it's a group Zoom. And it is, um, I usually take a different, I used to do a different topic every week. Uh, and now I take a topic and I run it for the month. Uh, it could be anything from chronic pain to allergies to whatever. Uh, this month, we're talking about the difference between allergies and, and intolerances. And also uh, how emotions impact those. You know, sometimes an allergy is an emotion that we can identify and release within minutes. So that's what, so what I do is I, these are free Zooms and I have different people come on the Zooms and I actually do some mini sessions, work on them, do a little bit. And, um, and so that's something I like to do. I've been doing for quite a while and I am going to be starting a new show coming up. So I'll let you know when my new show is Absolutely. starts as well. Absolutely. And, uh, I need to subscribe to that. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so, yes, a lot of things are happening on that level. And I think nowadays you're exactly right. People are starting to realize that, number one, you're the one who's responsible for your health. No one else. So the decisions and the choices you make can determine a lot of things. Uh, and number two, that there are many roads that lead to the same place and there's a lot of help out there just your program i think is valuable for people and there's so many different aspects out there but you need to do your research absolutely and you absolutely need to advocate for your health mm -hmm. cancer is supposed to be found in your blood right like when when you get blood work they're supposed to be able to see that it did not happen with me there was no trace of cancer at all in my blood they mm -hmm. did they did ultrasounds, transvaginal ultrasounds, weird tests. They had to do a DNC to find my cancer. Mm -hmm. I am super fortunate that I advocated for myself and that my that my uh, gynecologist was willing to go the extra steps because mm -hmm. she believed me when I said there's something wrong with my body. Well, I think that you hit on something very important, Tony, is first of all, you you were heard. You were someone actually listened to what you had to say. They weren't just trying to bulldoze something through. They, they, they were, you were being listened. And I think that's a huge part of, of healing and recovery is to, first of all, is to be heard, first of all, and not to be denied. How many times have I heard, oh, it's all in your head? Uh, just simply or, or because just they lose some weight. Yeah, or just do something. But you know what? Um, there was a recent study done in Oxford University on muscle response testing. And that's what I use. I use applied kinesiology. When I'm actually working, if I was working on you, for example, I would be using ring and muscle testing as a means to talk to your subconscious, ask yes or no questions. It's kind of like a lie detector. But uh, so there is a lot to be said for that type of, of connection. Uh, and so when we're talking about doing that muscle testing, the recent study said that uh, muscle response testing, this was done from Oxford, is as accurate, if not more accurate than our standard medical testing. So why not ask the, sub the mind? If the subconscious mind knows there's an imbalance and knows where it is and what's causing it, you know, I believe it's important to work from that end. And and it's the, it, the proof has been the pudding. There's been thousands of people I've worked with over the years and helped get to the source of their problem. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's very important that we look at it from many viewpoints. But don't forget our emotional well-being. Don't forget our, our energy. You know, energetically, we need to be healthy as well. Holistic. Holistic, yeah. yeah, all of it. Yeah, that's how we were designed. I mean, if if not, uh, my arm would be over there and my leg would be over here. But it's not. We're all. It's all connected together. Right? Sure is. So, yeah. do you do you have a gift for our our audience? Yeah, I think I do. I think I, I I might be able to put it in our. See, oh, there it is. It just showed up in 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 the chat here. Um, seven ways to find inner peace and happiness in any situation. Seven Fantastic. different tools that you can use 
uh, in any situation to find some more inner peace and happiness. And I'll make sure that that ends up in the link below um, as the chat unfortunately will not be saved. So I'll make yeah. sure that they have access to that as well as the free gift that I'm going to be giving, which is the, the two essential oils that I used every day while I was going through chemotherapy. Mm, so John, I really appreciate great. you being here today. Thank well, you. And I really appreciate uh, connecting with you, Tanya, and such amazing uh, women healers and practitioners that are out there. We, we need those women uh, because us men have kind of screwed things up a bit. We need a lot more of you women out there. So I'm I'm advocate for for women entrepreneurs and for women healers like yourself. So keep up the good work. Keep up the good work. Thank you, John. Thank you. Have a wonderful day, and, and we'll talk to you soon, Tanya. Yes. Take care, everyone.